This is KSL Sunday Edition with Boyd Matheson. Welcome to Sunday Edition. I am Boyd Matheson. Next week, Utahns will celebrate the 24th of July and the Days of 47 Parade. The pioneer spirit and legacy are deeply ingrained in the people of Utah. One of those citizens being honored in this year's parade and celebration is Elder D. Todd Christofferson, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I had the opportunity to sit down with Elder Christofferson for a wide-ranging conversation on the theme of this year's celebration, Pioneer Stories, Values to Build on. I gained insight on these principles, values, and character traits that are worth celebrating and emulating from the pioneers of the past and pioneers of today. We discuss his own pioneer heritage, Utah's unique place in the world, and why pioneering is a vital virtue for our future. I began by asking Elder Christofferson what it meant for him to be part of the rich history and lasting heritage of the Days of 47 Parade. It is getting to be a, a long legacy, isn't it? Uh, which I'm glad to see. You know, it's, it's important that we have some things that continue on through generations and pioneers and pioneering and honoring the past and those that uh, have made our life what it is in many ways. Uh, I'm just glad we continue this tradition. Yeah. So this year we have a, a theme of pioneer stories, principles to build on. I love that connection between the stories and the legacies to actual principles. Uh, give us some, some thoughts on that. Well, it's the stories that teach us. It's the stories where we learn uh, the principles, you know, the principles in application, uh, what, what it means in real life. I think of my own uh, pioneer heritage, or at least some connection to pioneer times from uh, a great, great grandfather who emigrated from Denmark as a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints back in 18... Uh, 59 it was and his son Peter who was my great-grandfather uh, was sent to settle in eastern Arizona and eventually ended up in Lehigh Utah where my dad was born my grandfather and dad and on my mother's side uh, her ancestors are all Swedish so I've got a big Scandinavian connection interestingly uh, one side of the family came to, emigrated to Utah in 1866. And they were unfortunately known as the cholera company. Cholera hit while they were on board ship before they got to New York and continued, got worse as they went along. So out of 11 in that family that started, only three made it, three or four. and. You learn a lot from the, the sacrifice, the persistence, the family support and, and community support in difficult times. Uh, that's always an important lesson because there's always difficult times. Yeah. Give us some other uh, principles that you've learned from your pioneer legacy, again, whether it was to Arizona or down to Lehigh and American Fork and Pleasant Grove area. What were some of those core principles you learned from those stories? I guess one would be uh, persistence. Uh, I think of my, my mother's father. He was not a pioneer in the technical sense of coming here before the railroad, but he came as an 11-year-old boy from Sweden, Helge Swenson. Uh, he uh, was supposed to come with his father. The family came in, in groups. They couldn't afford to all come at once. Uh, but then his father was called on a mission just before they were to leave. <laughs> so he came alone at age 11. Uh, he was put in company with another family to watch over him as, as they made the trek. <clears throat> but as an 11-year-old boy, he gets on the ship. He's so excited. He's exploring. He's running around the whole ship. And, and after a few hours, he realizes he doesn't remember what that family looks like <laughs> that he's supposed to be with. Um, but eventually somehow they found each other. But what impressed me, uh, they were very poor. They ended up in, in the Pleasant Grove area. They, the children couldn't really afford to live at home. A family couldn't afford to have them live at home. They had to live with other people and work for board and room. Uh, so he had uh, a life without uh, typical family 
experience or with his mother and dad, his own parents. He was with good people. But uh, he, he just worked, you know, he persisted. He built a, a family, he became the, eventually the county agricultural inspector for Utah County. Uh, had a wonderful life and a wonderful family. To me, it was just keep going. Uh, I'll do all I can and with what I have. I remember when he uh, and my grandmother dropped me off at Brigham Young University my freshman year. Uh, he looked around, he said, boy, if I'd had this kind of an opportunity, I would really have amounted to something. And <laughs> it almost made me cry because he was something. He really was uh, our ideal. All of the family looked to him for his qualities, his character, his love, his, uh, his outward focus on our welfare. And to me, that's greatness. He was a great man. And that's because he did all he could with what he had. Yeah, I, I love both that that persistence, uh, and then also kind of that community. That uh, it really was the community of people that uh, enabled him to get across the plains and, and ultimately build something that really was extraordinary. That's exactly right. Um, there's something about gathering. <laughs> you know, you combine strength and support one another, and and that uh, I guess being outward looking is another characteristic of, of pioneers. Yeah. Uh, one of your predecessors, uh, Gordon B. Hinckley, uh, he, he loved to talk about that, uh, those early settlers and the early saints uh, climbing Ensign Peak. And uh, he, he would always say they had a vision that was bold and audacious as they looked out over a, a pretty barren valley. Uh, you've w watched that and been part of that and seen that. Uh, what does that look like today? Uh, bold and audacious. <laughs> <laughs> No, it really was a, quite a visionary uh, beginning. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it now, um, one thing that strikes me is people didn't just survive, they thrived, and they mm -hmm. thrive here today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of this, uh, you know, initially it was a, a refuge yeah. for people fleeing persecution, mm -hmm. and it was just, you know, hunker down, yeah. a defense, a refuge. But it became and has become, according to that vision, really, a, uh, a wonderful gathering place for a wide variety of people. When we come back, more of my pioneering conversation with Elder D. Todd Christofferson, an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as we get ready for the 24th of July celebration here in the state of Utah one week away. Welcome back to Sunday Edition. Elder D. Todd Christofferson, an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, will be honored as part of the Days of 47 Parade as Utah celebrates the arrival of pioneers in the Salt Lake Valley on July 24th. I continued my conversation with Elder Christofferson talking about Utah's unique culture of upward mobility, the support of refugees, the spirit of volunteerism, and expanding global reach of the state. I asked him about the pioneering value of looking out for and seeing the dignity in others. Well, I believe the, the pioneer spirit and pioneering spirit uh, lends itself to or is part of a incorporates, I guess I should say, a, a pluralistic view of the world. Pioneers are wanting to establish something that uh, a society, a community that works, but not just for them, but for everyone who may come, other pioneers, others in the future. So I believe it's inherent, pluralism is inherent in a, a pioneer community and a pioneering spirit. And it works. I think Utah's an example. It works. <laughs> it can work. Uh, and I think in large part it's, uh, whether they define it this way or not, I think people kind of naturally here tend toward keeping those two fundamental commandments of God, loving Him and loving each other. And that works. Um, there are differences, there are disagreements, no question about it. But uh, I think we've learned to, to talk to each other, to uh, respect, as you say, the dignity of each other, to hear each other, and find a way. 
pioneers find a way. Yeah. Always find a way. Uh, one of the other interesting things I think is the this idea of, of the refugees. I think Utah has been a, uh, a place where refugees can come and, and not just hunker down and survive, but, uh, but really thrive and move forward. What is it that's unique uh, to Utah and that pioneering spirit that uh, does welcome those refugees? And, and the church obviously has been involved in refugee work, not just uh, those coming here, uh, but all around the world. What's, what is that? Why is that important uh, to that pioneering spirit? Well, part of it are those two commandments I mentioned, love of God and love of fellow man. But it's also, I believe, uh, a sense of, of the importance of gathering and becoming a community. Um, pioneering is gathering a group together uh, in a place for survival, perhaps initially, but to thrive. And coupled with that is the individual outward looking um, ethic or, or characteristic. Not just um, I'm here to enjoy myself or provide for myself, but I'm here to, to prepare for the future and prepare for future generations, to set foundations in place, to, to build something that lasts and benefits those who I will never meet, you know, who are coming down the road as well as those I know. So those two things to me come together, the gathering together to fortify and serve and help each other and that outward desire. You've got such a, uh, a sense of volunteerism, you know, ethic of volunteerism in this state. I remember uh, in the uh, the uh, stories about the Winter Olympics in 2002, right after the year after 9-11, but the focus of this uh, article I'm talking about, I read in the Wall Street Journal not long afterward, uh, was remarking on the, the volunteerism, the, the wealth, the plethora of volunteers who came forward to make it a success, um, and that it had never happened to that extent. Uh, before in the history of the Olympic Games. And it was quite a marvel to many people. Uh, but that's a characteristic of Utah. And I believe it comes out of that uh, pioneer heritage, among other things. I think one of the principles, I think, from the pioneers was they, they often uh, had that moment where they either had to leave something behind that was no longer helpful in their pioneering effort, or they just had to reprioritize uh, what was the most important thing. And often that meant leaving some good stuff along the way. Uh, but as you look at pioneering today, uh, what should we learn from that in terms of things we either ought to leave behind or things that maybe we ought to reprioritize? Well, pioneering is prioritizing. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to think of it, I believe. Uh, there's forced prioritizing and <laughs> there's voluntary prioritizing. Hopefully we can have more of the voluntary. Um, but you think, as you said, uh, observed, there's, there were things they brought initially they found they just couldn't maintain or continue to carry. Their animals would wear out. And, if they were gonna make their destination, they had to unload some things. And if we were physically going somewhere as pioneers, uh, I think there are a lot of toys that people have <laughs> that would, would not make it in the wagon yeah. or would have to be discarded on the way. And to me, that means maybe we ought to keep them in their place, uh, not devote our lives to recreation exclusively, but <clears throat> doing something that's, I mean, that's good and it's wholesome, but but it can't be the point and the purpose of life. So I think our priorities have to keep that aspect of life in, in perspective. Uh, the essential things are, are the character qualities that one has, the faith and hope and all the rest, um, that we have to prioritize, prioritize developing those, giving time for those. As you point out, there are a lot of good things, um, and we, frankly, none of us, have time and resources for all the good things, let alone the things that aren't good. But we, we can't do and invest in even every good thing. We have to prioritize even among that so that we protect and preserve the essential. 
and then we can add in whatever good, merely good, that uh, time and resources will permit afterward. But I believe, uh, and there are other things we, can, we ought to leave behind permanently, animosity and contempt and everything that, that detracts from a gathering and a healthy, wholesome community. Any final thoughts or other things uh, that you've been reflecting on rolling into this uh, Pioneer celebration? Well, perhaps it's just an elaboration of uh, something we've talked about earlier, and that is that, uh, that outward focus of pioneers, <clears throat> that um, while they're faced in many instances with just surviving, uh, they still are not consumed with their own needs and worries, but they're typically looking forward with hope looking forward with faith, and looking forward for something better for themselves and for those who come after them, and especially for those that are coming behind them. They're blazing a trail. They're opening a way, opening a path. And that characteristic, that central characteristic of pioneering, of providing a better future, um, is something I hope we, we won't lose. There are um, always, there's always the temptation of saying, oh, I'm a victim, you know, I've, I'm a victim of circumstances, I can't do anything, somebody has to help. And we do, we do have to help each other, that's the point. <clears throat> but we have to stand up and help others as well as be helped. After the break, we'll close out this special Pioneer Focus program with a look at the extraordinary life and legacy of pioneering artist Minerva Tiger. Stay with us on Sunday Edition. The art of Minerva Tigard is filled with lessons on pioneering, the American West, and the faith of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A new exhibit at the Church History Museum features the art and pioneering principles of Minerva Tigard. Our Carol Makita gave us an inside look. The images are intriguing, the colors bold. Art that tells a story. Once you have seen the paintings and murals of Minerva Tigard, you will not forget them. She worked in a school of art called the Muralist School. That was sort of her philosophy of art. And the idea behind it is to tell the most important stories in the most important public buildings. Those buildings include temples and tabernacles, meeting houses, and museums. Born in the Utah Territory in 1888, she grew up on an Idaho ranch and studied art in Chicago and New York City. She then married a Wyoming rancher and had five children. Art was part of her family life. She painted huge works in her living room. Lots of her paintings are these exact dimensions because that is the real estate she had to work with. Minerva said, unless I can paint a little each day on the great pageant of the West, I think the day is lost. For the first time, the public can see copies of her murals, which are actually painted onto the walls inside the Manti Utah Temple. That temple is under renovation right now. Latter-day Saints in the Temple District and beyond requested that church leaders preserve them. Conservation is part of this exhibition. This is all that's left of her painting, Restoration of the Melchizedek Priesthood. It was destroyed in 2010 in the Provo Tabernacle Fire. That loss prompted protection for Minerva Teichert's legacy. Our paintings now are 100 years old in many cases, and so we're just trying to make sure that her message and her vision and her unique talent can, can continue to be shared with the public. All 45 paintings in this show have been restored. A lot of them are cleaned for the first time in 50 years, and it's wonderful just to have those colors pop. The exhibition includes her works that envision scenes from the life of Jesus Christ, church history and the restoration, and the Latter-day Gathering in the West. We hope as people walk through that they can feel the sincerity of that faith um, and know what was important to Minerva and her heart. The artist once said, to paint something, it must be either very beautiful or an important story. With this covenant in my heart, the art and faith of Minerva Teichert, 
opens July 6th at the Church History Museum and continues through August 3rd, 2024. Carol joins me now in studio. Carol, welcome to Sunday Edition. Wow, just stunning work. Absolutely gorgeous. And if you think you know all of Minerva's paintings, you haven't seen them all because some of them have been in temples or privately owned. Yeah, uh, and, and so many, just looking at all of those and then to think of the circumstances under which all of that was done. I, I think she is an example of bloom where you're planted and incorporate your passion into what you do every day. She was remarkable. Her story is as interesting as her paintings, yeah. I think. Her life was lived in a, in a complete cycle. She would cook breakfast, go feed the chickens, do scripture study with the children, and then go into the living room and paint those gorgeous yeah. murals, and then go back and put the pot on for dinner and welcome people into her home and say, but wait a minute, can you stay for a minute? I love the face, or I love your hands, I need them in my next mural. So uh, she, her children say she was driven, and she once said, I must yeah. paint. So it's a lesson that. for us all. If there's something you love to do, incorporate it into yeah, your life. You have to do that. And I love that all of them are the size of her wall <laughs> exactly. in her home is right. classic. Real quick, Carol, give us a, an insight from her teacher back in New York that really, I think, sparked and drove that passion. I think it's wonderful. She studied under Robert Henry, a, a painter in his own right, but a famous teacher. Mm. And he said to her once, is there anyone who's telling the story of your people mm. uh, in art? And she said, not to my satisfaction. <laughs> and he said, then you must do it. <laughs> and, and this is what we have, yeah. treasures. Carol, thanks so much for joining us on Sunday edition today. So true pioneers live the axiom of Ralph Waldo Emerson, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Leaving a trail for those that follow really is the hallmark of pioneers, patriots, and different makers across the ages. The pioneering spirit is more needed today than ever before. So in a day desperate for more true leaders, the world needs a new group of pioneers and trailblazers to drive the economy, ensure justice, transcend prejudice, transform local communities, and elevate the human condition. Thank you for joining us on this special Sunday edition. Look at pioneer stories and the values to build on. I'm Boyd Matheson. Thanks for joining us. And as always, as you go out into the world, make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference. Music and the Spoken Word is next.